Cubase Elements is the perfect solution for a home project recording studio. In this video, we're going to take a look at how you download, activate, and install Cubase Elements. If you've just signed up for the trial version, then watch this video to learn how to get started. Go to the support page on the Steinberg website, scroll down to find the download section. There, under the Download Software tab, you can see Cubase Elements 10. You'll be taken to a new page where you can download the Steinberg Download Assistant. It's a matter of choosing the correct operating system and downloading it. Once the Download Assistant is finished, you can open it up. And this is the setup. So we're going to install the Steinberg Download Assistant on your computer. As with all Steinberg software, the Download Assistant is really easy to install. Make sure you read the license agreement carefully and when you're ready, accept the agreement. Once you select Next, the Steinberg Download Assistant will start installing on your computer. And when it's finished, as long as you haven't unchecked the prompt box to launch the Steinberg Download Assistant, it will automatically start up. It may take a little while, so please be patient. Once it's ready, you can see a number of products on the left-hand side. Don't go crazy and download anything that you haven't purchased because they're large download files and they won't work without activation. Select Download on the right-hand side and the disk image will start downloading. It's 15 gigabytes, so it's going to take some time and it's going to depend very much on your internet speed. If for any reason you need to pause the download, just simply hit the pause button on the right-hand side and the download will pause until you're ready to continue. Once the software is finished, you can select open and it will open the file that you've just downloaded. Double click on it to unpack it. And this will take some time again because of course it's 15 gigabytes. Open the disk image and now we can click on the installer to start the installation process. Once again, it's an easy process, just follow the prompts. So I'm going to hit continue. Once again, read the license software agreement and make sure you agree. And now it's a matter of hitting the install button and entering your password and Cubase elements will start installing on your computer. This is also going to take some time and I've sped it up for demonstration purposes. The installer will also install the eLicenser Control Center. Now we need this to activate any version of Cubase and we're going to deal with this a little bit later on in the video. Cubase Elements comes packed with 15 gig of content, which is why the installation process takes a little bit of time. And you can see all of these content packs loading onto your computer. Once the installation process is finished, select Done. The trial version of Cubase Elements 10 is exactly the same as the full version of Cubase Elements 10. It's the same download size. All you need is your activation code to enter into the eLicense Control Center. If you've got a license redemption card, then we're going to use the code from this to enter into the eLicense Control Center. Next up, we need to go to Applications and we need to open the eLicenser Control Center. So I'm just finding that and I'm going to double click on it and load it up. When the eLicenser Control Center opens, you're prompted to perform maintenance tasks. And this is a good idea just to clean up any licenses. Once again, it's an online synchronization, so this can also take several minutes. So please be patient. While this is loading, it's a great idea to take the time to read the information on the eLicenser Control Center. Now we're ready to enter the activation code. So go up to the green icon in the top left hand corner and select enter activation code. You can enter your code or copy and paste it. Once you're ready, select continue. If you've got a blue USB e-licenser, you can download the license straight onto that. But if not, just select the license that's there. Once it's loaded, select close. The Cubase Elements 10 activation is visible there and you can see that it's sitting on the soft e-licenser. Now we can go up to registration and we can select register at My Steinberg. This is going to take us to the My Steinberg webpage so make sure you're connected to the internet. If you don't have a My Steinberg account, select create account and follow the instructions. If you already do, enter your email or username and your password and you're ready to log in. Once you log in successfully, you'll see your soft e-licenser. Now you just need to select continue and you will have successfully registered your software with your soft e-licenser. Take a moment to read this web page and then select I'm done. 
which will take us to the main My Steinberg page. And you can see all the products that you have registered with Steinberg. There's a number of different things you can do inside of My Steinberg, including register hardware and reactivate software. So it's a good idea to take a moment to have a look around. If you buy a new computer, it's really easy to reactivate the soft e-licenser. And it's all done right here in the My Steinberg section on the Steinberg website. Next up, it's time to load up Cubase Elements 10. I've gone to my Applications folder and I'm just going to find Cubase Elements 10 and double click on it. Now the very first time you load up Cubase Elements 10, or any version of Cubase, it takes a little while and that's because the software is scanning your computer to pick up on things like hardware, content and also third party plugins. Once again, it's just a matter of being a little bit patient. The very first thing you'll see when Cubase loads up is the Steinberg Hub. On the left hand side you can see tutorial videos and news. On the right hand side a number of different templates which are really a number of different projects with different instruments and effects. Down the bottom you can see use default location which means Cubase will specify where your project's stored or prompt for project location which is always a good idea to have selected because that means that you choose the project folder. It is important to make sure you know where your project's been saved because there's a number of files that go into this project folder. So if you don't manage your folder location, it can get quite messy. If it is your very first time using Cubase Elements, then it might be a good idea to load up one of the generic templates and have a look around. But don't worry, in the following videos, there's plenty of information on how you can get started being creative with Cubase Elements 10. I'll see you there.